In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own radio station from home. From choosing the right equipment to building your own website, stick with us and by the end of this video, you will be ready to broadcast online. If you have a passion for a particular subject and you want your voice heard, then internet radio is the perfect medium to help you achieve this. Over the past 10 years, internet radio has seen a massive growth. Listeners in the UK alone are increasing 10% every year, according to the BBC's Radio Joint Audience Research Institute. To put that into perspective, that's roughly 82 million hours listened to in an average week. A big driver behind this is due to the increase of mobile phones and tablets. You're not as restricted as you once were accessing AM, FM and digital radio stations. Now you can connect from anywhere on a smart device. In the USA, there's an average of 124 million people per month listening to radio on mobile devices and laptops. 75% of those aged between 12 and 24 years old access radio stations online. So there's a big demand for it, which is only going to increase over time. There's really never been a better time to start your own internet radio station. Understanding the basics of setting up an internet radio station at home can help to paint a clearer picture of how your audio travels from point A to point B, eventually streaming to your listeners. There are three stages when it comes to broadcasting online. Stage one is the source. So your computer mixes audio, this can be live voice or music, and then it converts it into a stream of data packets which are constantly sent to a server. Stage two is the server. So when your stream arrives at the server, it's cleaned up and pushed to the appropriate channels. Radio.co does this for you, so there's no need to worry about setting and configuring your own server. Stage three is your listener, so everybody else. Wherever your broadcast is online, if that's a direct streaming link to your station or via an embedded player on a site, anyone can connect and hear your radio station. So it's quite straightforward. Your audio is pushed out to the internet, managed in the cloud by radio.co and then distributed to your audience worldwide. Now let's look at a few technical terms and what they mean for your station. The terms bitrate and bandwidth are used a lot by online radio hosting platforms. They're a way to convey how data is managed. For example, bitrate is the quality of your broadcasts. As video defines its quality and resolution, like 480p, 720p and 1080p on your TV, audio is quantified by bitrate. The MP3 format has 16 kilobits per second, which is ideal for spoken word. 32 kilobits per second is for a talk show, 48 kilobits per second for an AM radio, 64 kilobits per second for FM radio, 96 kilobits per second for near CD quality, 128 kilobits for CD quality, and 192 kilobits per second for studio quality. For the most part, 128 kilobits per second is a good option as it sounds clear on modern computers and is generally followed as the radio industry standard. Lower bit rates like 64 kilobits per second are useful for listeners with slow Wi-Fi or cellular speeds on mobile, so your shows get delivered without any interruption. Bandwidth, on the other hand, is the amount of data used to broadcast online to listeners. The quantity of bandwidth used depends on your bit rate and the number of listeners you have. To give you an idea of how much you might use, let's say you have 100 listeners. If they stay tuned in constantly for over an hour using 128 kilobits per second, then that's roughly 5.49 gigabytes of bandwidth. You can estimate how much bandwidth you might use by heading to the link shown on screen. A common question that crops up a lot here at Radio.co is, do I need expensive equipment to broadcast? And the answer is no. You can essentially get by with the basics. That means you just need a standard computer or laptop with an internet connection, a microphone and a good pair of headphones. Some people opt for a mixer as well, but we'll get into that later. When you're first starting out, it's better just to get up and running as quickly as possible. So use any equipment you currently have and just upgrade as you go along. There are two microphones we recommend. These are the Behringer B1 and the Rode Podcaster. They're a bit different from one another. For example, the B1 is a condenser microphone which picks up clear audio with its wide diaphragm, so it's ideal if you've got your own studio and have guests on board. A Rode Podcaster, on the other hand, is a dynamic microphone. It's excellent at cancelling out background noises, so perfect if you're in a noisy area or have a guest close by. Which one you choose depends on your home radio studio setup, but both are a great reliable starter microphone. Every station needs a good pair of headphones, but the problem is finding the right ones for you. 
If you're looking for an affordable pair of headphones, then try Sony's MDR ZX310. They're lightweight and they rest nicely on your ear, so they're really comfortable to wear, plus you can fold them away when traveling. Then there's more upmarket headphones like the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro. They're an industry standard here in the UK and used by a lot of professional commercial stations like BBC Radio 1. As you can see from the image, they have large over-the-ear padded cups. These are ideal for long periods of usage so they don't get uncomfortable when wearing them for a long time. Plus they filter out most background noises. Mixers or broadcasting desks are a huge part of any radio station. They're a handy tool to manage multiple audio signals, for example if you have two microphones, a CD deck and a phone attached then you can control the volume levels and a master signal that gets pushed out to your station. Now there's two mixers that we would recommend, there's the Behringer 802 and the Behringer DX2000 USB. The Behringer 802 for example is the beginner's best friend. It's ideal for small setups as it's compact, affordable and has up to four channels, two of which are mic inputs for you and a guest. If you're new to mixers then this is a good little desk to test the waters. Then there's the Behringer DX2000 USB which is a massive step up in comparison to the 802. It's much more rich in features, for example there's seven channels, each with their own volume level fader and EQ management controls. This allows you to adjust how you sound when broadcasting live, so if you're a bit too loud then you can adjust the gain control with just the turn of a dial. Once you have your station equipment set up, it can be challenging to keep it going live non-stop throughout the week, especially in the long run. That's where automation can come in handy. Package up your shows or grab individual tracks and upload them to radio.co. Organise your media into playlists and schedule them throughout the day, week or even month. In the cloud, automation gives you peace of mind knowing your station is running non-stop and handled by a team of radio experts. Radio automation is quite a powerful tool to handle shows when you're not around, but you don't get that same feeling or level of engagement as when you're broadcasting live. Live broadcasting offers you the chance to talk in real time to your audience, discuss topics like current events and artists you are playing on your station at the time, and you can also get some really interesting conversations going by chatting with people that have different points of views to your own. Plus, it's interesting for people to stay engaged for longer. For example, talk one-on-one -on -one with a live phone in to debate topics or discuss talking points from messages via Twitter or Facebook. Sometimes though, listeners might miss out, so a quick tip is to record live shows and play them back later for those that didn't catch them the first time around. This ties back to automated broadcasting. You can upload recorded shows and replay them for listeners tuning in at different times of the day. Broadcasting software is a tool that you can use to stream live to your station, either if that's spoken word, music or a little bit of both. Whether you're new to internet radio and need a simple solution, or if you're an experienced professional scouting for the next best alternative, there's plenty of broadcasting software available. Some are easy, that you just click and broadcast, like B-U-T-T, -T, broadcast using this tool, whilst others are a bit more complex with virtual mixers, faders and EQ sound control like Serato DJ. Whatever you're after, it's best to weigh up the options. For a full list of the best radio broadcasting solutions, then follow the link as shown on screen. There's around 3.5 billion users on the internet, which is a lot of potential listeners. So let's say your radio station is now set up and broadcasting, there's actually no guarantee listeners will tune in, not unless it appeals to them. Understanding and targeting demographics is a really good way to narrow your audience for those that will be interested. These are things like geographic area, race, gender, age, interests and lifestyle. For example, there is a station here in the UK called Absolute 80s and as the name suggests, it plays nothing but 80s music. So we already know a majority of the listeners will be older at around 30 years and upwards. Defining a station's ideal listener like this helps to tailor content and gets people a little bit more engaged for longer and gets them coming back more as well. In the long run, it just makes it easier for you to grow your audience because you know exactly who you're talking to. Listeners won't stick around for long if they struggle to access your station, so you want to try and make it as easy as possible to tune into your shows. There's a few different ways listeners can access your station. For example, they can stream directly from your broadcasting server like streaming.radio.co, through internet radio directories like TuneIn and Streamer, on mobile apps like iPhone and Android, or via an embedded player on your site. The point is, 
Just make it easy for listeners to tune into your shows. Offer as many of these options as you can to increase your presence online and to grow your audience as well. Turn your radio station from a hobby into a full-time business by converting listeners into customers. Even if you don't have something to sell right now, it's really good to capture listeners' details and add them to a mailing list. The more people you have, the more powerful it is and useful later down the line when you are selling goods, like affiliate products, your own merchandise, or you want to tell people about what's happening in your shows. It's a great tool to keep that connection open with your audience. So you should be actively trying to grow your mailing lists. For example, you can collect email addresses of visitors on your website. People won't give up their details without something in return though, so you should offer incentives, even if it's something like a weekly newsletter. Remind listeners to join your shows where they can go to reap these benefits. For example, at some point, link them to your site, myradioshow.com forward slash subscribe. Nudge them regularly, mentioning your shows at the start, end and even in your jingles. Tools like Hello Bar help you set up lead captures. For example, if you're running a WordPress site, you can easily add a plugin like Scroll Triggered Boxes. Services like this need email management software such as MailChimp or MadMimi. Use them to send out mass emails to all your captured leads at once, which helps you stay connected with your audience by keeping them in the loop. A website is the cornerstone of any radio station. Without one, you miss important opportunities to drive up growth and engage with your listeners. For example, just craft and publish blog posts with contact forms to connect with your visitors. Creating a site doesn't need to be complicated though, not with the radio.co website builder. Create an amazing website for your radio station with no fuss and no technical headaches. Just like radio.co, the website builder runs entirely from the cloud, so you can access and edit your site from anywhere. There's no software to download and install, plus no code to learn. The extensive theme library has dozens of design templates to choose from, so you can easily customize the look and feel of your site. Build new pages quickly with drag and drop. Just place what you want on your site and then click and edit. Get your own .com address included when you grab the website builder. Check if a website name is available by following the link on screen. Coca-Cola, Apple and Yamaha all have something very similar in common. They each have very strong and recognisable brands. Take Yamaha, for example. They're known for building quality products like pianos, mixers and other audio equipment that radio stations use. When you see their logo on a piece of equipment like a guitar, it's easy to associate it with the brand. When your station can be easily recognised by its logo, slogan or even the type of music you play, then you are definitely doing something right. The main reason your station should have a strong brand is often due to competition and choice online. You're essentially trying to look more appealing than anybody else. One way you can create a memorable brand is by building your own website and mobile apps to match the look and feel of your station. When you have a consistent tone throughout, then it's easier to spot your brand, just like Coca-Cola, Apple and Yamaha. In this day and age, every radio broadcaster, big or small, has their own iPhone and Android apps. At the minute, there's around 2 billion smartphone users in the world, which is set to go up to nearly 3 billion by 2020. On average, around a couple hundred million apps are downloaded a day on both the App Store and Google Play. That is a lot of potential listeners that can grab your app. Your listeners are everywhere, so make sure you can reach them anywhere. Creating apps is simple using the Radio.co app builder wizard. You can completely match the look and feel of your station by uploading your logo and link to your social media account so listeners can share your shows. There's absolutely no need to hire a developer or learn any code because everything is taken care for you. We will submit your apps on your behalf as well to the app stores. You can start designing your app today. For more information, follow the link shown on screen. Hopefully this has given you everything you need to know on how to start your own radio station from home. That's it for the presentation, but it doesn't have to end here. You can talk with us by dropping us a quick email at studio at radio.co, send us a quick tweet at radio.co, or talk with a member of the team by booking a demo on the link on screen. Alternatively, if you want to get started today, then you are more than welcome to. Start your seven-day free trial by heading over to try.radio.co.